first one I've been to since coronavirus shut everything down. It's a little interesting um, seeing people without masks and kind of talking to people like everything back to normal. And in some ways it is, in some ways it isn't. Yeah, it's just a very interesting season that we're all living and cohabiting together with. I'm gonna be walking about two miles. My Airbnb is about two miles away from the venue. Best place I could find for the budget. So I'm going to, to go do that. Probably walk and maybe find a couple little shops to kind of check out. And um, I also am gonna input all the films that I watched last night in my, in my database and kind of reach out to those filmmakers that films that I thought I resonated with. Uh, so that takes a couple hours to kind of do all that prep work. And then I'm gonna watch a lot of screenings, probably at least 30 films probably. So it's a lot of intake and you know, make a lot of notes and uh, hopefully I'll be able to collaborate with some of these filmmakers on their future projects. So this is kind of in the field action of networking. It's not glamorous, uh, it's a lot of sales and just basic kind of stuff. Nothing too groundbreaking or revolutionary, but it's, uh, it's fun. So this is my Airbnb that I'm staying at. It's a little, it's a little creepy. Yesterday I got to meet some great filmmakers and see some really cool films. The event that we went to was was intimidating at first because I haven't talked to anyone in person like this in a while. Um, so it was odd, but by the end of the night I think everyone was comfortable and uh, it was overall a great experience. There's some directors that hopefully I'll be able to work with soon. It's funny, <laughs> like the first day I got there, uh, there was like nobody there and then yesterday was was a good turnout and actually already got a gig out of it just from this one trip. And that's what I, that's what I'm talking about when it comes to, you know, risk reward. Obviously it costs money to travel, but the the risk versus reward is just it's just no a no brainer for me. More than likely that project will pay for this trip as well as probably maybe a month of my living expenses. Uh, and that's just from just out the gate saying, Hey I'm Evan. You know, I write music. Oh, I've got a project coming up I really need music for. Bam, just like that. So it's really not rocket science. <laughs> it's just, you know, being in the right place at the right time and presenting yourself in a manner of, you know, that you are professional and that you make good work. So, you know, that's kind of the, the overall approach that I make when it comes to the Nice Film Festivals. And then, you know, you can talk about your work, but I always tell everyone the best thing to do when you're networking is to ask them questions. Don't talk about yourself. You know, it comes off as arrogant, but also, you know, you can actually find more common ground when you ask them questions than you would just talking about yourself. And you can obviously insert your own kind of ideas and things like that. I always accumulate to like a first date, so just ask as many questions as you can, and it, it paid out. So. I'm excited. My film is actually screened today, uh, this evening, and I'm going to be in a Q&A. Uh, so I'm gonna videotape that so I can show you guys kind of that process. So I'm looking forward to uh, share that with you all as well. I'm actually going to get a coffee and do a lot of data input from people that I met. So I can, because they're fresh on my brain. When you meet a lot of people at once, it's easy to get them confused. So I write down little descriptors about who they are, what project they're on, you know, where they're from, things like that. So that way I can, it's easier to identify them because it's just a lot of people. So yeah, anyway, uh, that's just another trick of the trade that I've picked up. So I uh, hope you guys are enjoying the video so far. I don't know how to transition and transition. I'm Evan Hodges, I'm the composer for Tough. Good job. Um, my first question to you is, um, yeah. now, you, like I said, as a composer, right, that you were shown the, you were shown the script before? Uh, yeah, the script, yeah, and he was okay. editing it. Well, All right, was, so, okay, from your own take as a composer, okay, what, what's the first wheel that goes into motion when you, when you look at the material? Uh, yeah, I mean, honestly, the first thing is like the tone and the feel. Uh, like what worlds, you know, like the director is building and how I can, can kind of 
put in my thoughts on what I think the music would help, you know, to create this world. Uh, Tough was interesting because it's a home invasion, it, so it, start, it masks itself pretty well. It like, starts off as like this invasion thing, and then it turns into this comedy. So the music is only in there in the serious moments, and then there's a lot of space. So Tough was a tricky one to do because it had so many different kind of pacing things, you know? So just mm -hmm. finding my lane and kind of staying in that lane, so. Very good. All right, we'll fill any questions out here. Go, got them up there. Uh, for Evan, um, yeah. what inspired, what musical influences inspired you for the score? Oh, uh, I don't know, that's a tough one. Um, the director and I both love Panic Room. Like, I think Panic Room's mentioned like seven or eight times in this film festival alone. Huh? So, uh, you know, Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross were, were a huge influence on the score. So I used a lot of analog synthesizers to make the sounds. Uh, there's like a lot of different rhythmic pulses and different microtonal like notes between notes that I was making to create tension uh, for the score. So really it was just more about like creating um, an, an, like, an, like an experience for people to watch, you know? So like having mo music in the right spots was, was definitely the most important part for me. So yeah, I don't know if that answered your question. But. It answers for it, but okay, cool. Okay. Well, Trent Reznor too. There you yeah. go. <laughs> what did you consider uh, your probably most challenging moment? So I'm obviously, as I said, as I like to call it, make or break. Yeah, for me was, uh, obviously I have an American accent. Uh, the film was an Australian film. So uh, I met the director at a festival and just kind of became friends with him. And uh, Melbourne, Australia and Atlanta has 14 hours difference time. So I had to score <laughs> the film in like a week and a half. So I would like stay up till like one or two in the morning scoring, go to sleep, wake up, have notes, repeat, you know. So it was, that was probably the communication. Like I, I, li I can work with remote people, I do it all the time, mm -hmm. but there's something magical about being in the same space with somebody creating something. So, you know, yeah. I think the time and the distance was the hardest part for me. Do you have any uh, other uh, projects, say, floating around? Uh, yeah, I'm always, uh, working on different projects. It's kind of a madhouse for me. Um, right now, I'm doing a video game score, mm -hmm. um, and then I'm also working on a documentary, and then I'm working on a feature in the pre-production stage, two features. All right, let's hear it for our film magic here. Right? <laughs>
It was a uh, it was a really good time. Tonight was a great night. I, it was awesome to be around other filmmakers and to share stories and to laugh and to learn a lot about people. I was excited because I met. I uh, actually got to talk about some deep personal stuff with with one filmmaker that I wasn't anticipating. It just kind of happened. You can have really deep, meaningful conversations, uh, which obviously is super important and build developing relationships. I picked up another two gigs as well. So I have three gigs now from this festival and that's before I've even done any email. So that's pretty exciting. Kind of logging off. Uh, I'm going to be doing some more festivals this year. So I'll be sure to, to document those. People think that composers just work in a space and actually everybody coming tonight was like I never see composers at festivals. And to cut it short, I did this because I wanted to show that it's not just about writing music, it's about developing relationships and cultivating those relationships. So I hope this was informative to you all. Now I'm going to go in here and go to sleep. Take care.